Hello, Dorothy. Hello, Ethel. What's up, David? Hello, Shirley. Hello, Deborah. Sally. Hello, Lori. Lita, Patricia, Julie, good afternoon. I'm going to get started here in about five minutes. I'm going to let the, the viewers kind of build up here. And then we're going to knock this chicken and dumplings out. It's so quick and easy. Hello, Barbie. South Carolina in the house. Hello, Cynthia. Oklahoma, Kathy in the house. Hello, Cynthia. Okay, a couple of minutes and I'm gonna get started. This whole process shouldn't take no more than 30 minutes. Welcome, Teresa. Oh, you off work. That's perfect timing, huh? Georgia in the house. KY, I think that's Kentucky. Okay, we're going to get started here. Today, I'm making chicken and dumplings. The, I had a poll out this week, as y'all know, and chicken and dumplings was overwhelming the winner. So what I have already done to speed up the process, you see the recipe I posted this morning has been online. I've did this so many times. I've already did my stock. That's the key to it. Every chicken and dumpling is the stock. I have the stock going right here, which is the base of your chicken and dumplings right here. And the way I did that, like I said, I like to add flavors to flavor. And this is the most important part of your chicken and dumpling to stock. What I did this morning, or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a few hours ago, I took some chicken thighs. I like chicken thighs better than any part of the chicken. You can use the whole chicken. I've done that. I think the chicken thighs has more flavor, and you get more bang for your buck with chicken thighs. That's why most of the time I use legs and thighs for my dumplings. Well, what I did, I took, as you can see in the recipe, chopped celery and onions. I added water, salt and pepper. You want to season it really, really good because you want the season to go into the chicken also. And you want a really, really flavorful stock. And I got the bones here to prove you know, that I that I did do the chicken. And I got the chicken here already picked. But the chicken go in, gonna go in at the last, as I'll show you as the recipe progresses. But like I said, I got the stock going right here. That's the base. I call this stock. It's like the broth. It's the it's the it's the main part of your chicken and dumpling. If your stock is not good, I don't care how good the dumplings are. If your, if your stock and base is not good, the dumplings is not going to hide it. 
So now I'm going to make the dumplings. I like to put on gloves here because I don't like my hands getting too, too dirty, which I do sometimes, but the initial process I use the gloves. Okay, what I'm going to do is put some all-purpose flour. And y'all go by the recipe that I got online there. I usually make this like 15 times a year. So I pretty much don't even have to measure. I really pretty much know by heart because like you say, this is my mom's favorite recipe. So add some flour here. Really all dumplings is is a biscuit dough with no leavening agent. Leavening agent meaning it don't have no baking powder or no baking soap in it to make it right. Because you don't want your dumplings to, to have too much leavening agent. If not, they'll break apart when you put it in the in the stock pot. Okay, what I'm gonna do, now I use, sometimes I use butter, sometimes I use shortening, but sometimes I use both. I, this is the only shortening I use, Crisco. I don't use no all brand shortener like this. I don't get paid by Crisco, but this is just the best. I just use Crisco shortening, it's just the best. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use half butter and half Crisco in this one. Like I said, I'm just eyeing this, but I have measured this completely, and the recipe does work online, so just to let you know. I'm going to put a little salt and pepper. I'm not going to put a lot. The reason is the stock is so flavorful. I don't want to make my dumplings so salty that it oversauce the whole uh, dish. So what I'm going to do here, let's say this gets messy. I'm going to cut the butter. I use my fingers. I use the warmth of my fingers to do that. If you got a biscuit cutter, you can do that. I use the uh, my finger. What you're going to do, you want to cut in the butter and the shortening into the dough, into the flour. And this is all-purpose flour. Now, I ask y'all questions after this is over or as the dumplings are cooking. I can't see what y'all are saying right now while I'm doing this. I'll look periodically. And this is what you want on the dumplings there, if you can see it, hold it down or whatever, so you can see it. Okay, once that's done, you're going to add buttermilk to it. You're going to add, if the recipe, go according exactly like I got in the recipe, it'll come out perfect. You just want to add enough buttermilk to incorporate the flour. You don't want it to be too, too, uh, too thin, you don't want it to be too dry. And you can use regular milk if you want to, if you don't like the taste of buttermilk. But buttermilk always works best for me. And while I'm doing this, I have my uh, stock stock here boiling. So when the but when the uh, dumplings is uh, ready to go in, there's no delay. I go right in the pot. Okay, that's it. This is enough to cooperate. It's not dry. And another key to this, see that? You don't want to over mix this. If it is, you're going to have very tough dumplings. That's another thing going to defeat the purpose of your dumplings. You don't want to over mix them. Wipe the sweat off my face. It's kind of hot in here over this stove. Okay. Now, here goes the fun part. Making, rolling the dumplings out. Put a little flour on the board. Make sure you put enough flour on the board so they don't stick when you're rolling them out. Go. Nothing out on there like that. Just like making biscuits. Same thing. Only thing is no leavening agent, no baking powder there. Okay, we're going to roll these out, we're going to put a little flour on top, there you go, you 
see, I didn't mess with the dough too much because I don't want it to, uh, I want the, the, the uh, dumplings to be very tender and not tough. Like I said, you want to roll it out about a half an inch. I roll it out kind of thin, but my dumplings cook very quickly. Okay, then I take a little pizza cutter here, put the flour on there, go this way, this way. Now also, there are different methods of dumplings. Some people, before I roll them out on the board, you can do a drop dumpling. I don't like that because I don't like my dumplings round. I like them square. That's where my mama used to make it. So I can say, what you seen growing up, that's what you do. So I try not to alter from that. So I have seen drop dumplings, which tastes good. You can drop them if you want to. If you don't want to roll them out like this, you can definitely do that. And just go across like this. See how simple that was? Now, take these gloves off here. Now, we're going to dump them into the hot sock here. Little by little. You don't want to overcrowd it because what's happening when you're putting them in the, in the pot, the temperature is dropping. So you want to put them in there too, too many and overcrowd the pot and uh, they start to stick. They're going to start, after within a minute, they're going to start floating to the top. And what I do, do, I go around the edge first, get the little ones, put in there, then I do the big ones. Okay, I got that many. Now this one you stir. I, when I stir, I use the back of the spoon, because they're so delicate right now, because they just wouldn't put in there. And I stir with the back of a... Uh, Wooden spoon or metal spoon you can use, but I use the back of it. And just stir it around. Y'all yeah. with me and y'all sleep? But I can't see what y'all saying over there. Okay. Put some more in there. This whole thing gonna go in the pot. Y'all can actually see it on the camera. You'll see the end result. Water right away there. Look at that. Like I say, this is so, so easy. Like I said, I make this about 15, 20 times a year because this is my mom's favorite. Favorite meal is chicken and dumpling. And she wants more dumplings than chicken. She said, baby, I don't care about the chicken. I don't want the meat. Just give me the dumpling. So I always put more dumpling with me. I like the meat. Go. Let it come back up to temperature. Like I said, if you stir it too much at the beginning, they'll break apart and you just have a, a stock pot full of mushy, doughy, broken up dough. Hey Brandy, the recipe is already posted. I posted it this morning. Hello, George. Okay. Put some more in. Now these are looking very good, awesome. Yes, sir, look at that guys. This is so, so easy. So easy. broken apart on me yet. And if I get them all in here, I'm going to cook them for like 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, I'm going to add, this is something a lot of people doesn't do. They like the actual dumplings like this. They like it thinning. With me, with me, I like a creamier dumpling. So what I do, I add a little milk and I also tighten it up with roux to give it more body. Because in the winter time, that's why I usually love eating chicken dumplings in the winter. Not in the summer, it's not a summer thing, but in the winter time when it's cold, a hot bowl of chicken and dumpling and cornbread and hot sauce, it doesn't get much better. 
Okay. This is awesome. I'm going to move this camera over so y'all can see it. I'm going to move the camera where y'all can see what exactly. I don't know if y'all can see it on the camera. Let me let's see here. Okay, so y'all can see it. See that? That's what I got there. See that? That's what I want. And then uh, I'm going to let them cook like this for like 10 minutes. And then... Uh, Let's see how easy this was. I, this took 10 minutes. I did that in likely 10 minutes. It's nothing to it. Like I said, I'm going to let it come to a boil. Then I'm going to add some milk in there. I'm going to tighten with a little, little bit of roux, not much. And then I'm going to add the chicken that I cooked already and picked. I'm going to add that back to it. And then it's good to go. Okay, I'm going to put this back over here. Okay. Later on, I'm going to have a cameraman, so I ain't got to do this. I'll be good where I can have a cameraman to do this. But anyway, right now, that's where I got to do it. Okay. Get this out the way. Get this out the way. I hate working with flour, but it is what it is. Okay. Y'all with me or did I lose somebody? Then y'all see how easy this is? And also another tip, the flour from that you have on, on the chicken, it will uh, help thicken this also a little. But for some people, this is it. They don't want to add nothing else. And you know what, matter of fact, I might not have to add much root to it, which I'm going to add a little milk. But I'm going to do that right now. And just a little milk to it. Even, even a half a cup. Now, you don't have to add the milk to yours. You can just leave it like as is. But like I say, I, add a, I like a little body to mine. I like a little creamier dumpling. Okay. Now, Add the root to this. Y'all follow me on up. Y'all know what root is. I don't add much. Just maybe one tablespoon of this. Just to give it a little bit more thickness. Oh yeah. I'm gonna give y'all a close-up shot again of these dumplings. Once I add the chicken. But I'm going to taste it now again. It shouldn't need any salt and pepper. Because my stock was so flavorful. Oh yeah, that's good. It's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Look at that. Now, it's thickened enough. It's cooked enough, now I'm going to put the chicken in there to let the chicken come back up to temperature that I picked earlier. Now you don't necessarily have to pick it off the bone, but it, 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 it eats better when it's not on the bone. Look at that. There we go. There we go, bowl of chicken and dumb. I'm going to move the camera over now again so y'all can see it. One day I'll have a cameraman in here.
go. See that? Look at that. See that chicken and dumplings? So easy. So easy. So easy there. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the fire down and I'm gonna I'm gonna paint I'm gonna put some post uh, scoop some up and show y'all how they look here. So easy, so so easy, so quick. Where's my label? All right, here we go. Here we go here. Look at that. So awesome. Hold that up to the camera so y'all can see that. See that? Look at that. That's one good too. See? Awesome. And it's all. I'm going to put a piece of cornbread with it. Eat mine with cornbread here. I got some cornbread. I always have cornbread. Cornbread there. Old school cornbread. Look at that. Put that on there. Can't beat this. Even this one here. Gotta be a big piece of cornbread. See that? That's the way I eat it, like that. I'm gonna take a quick picture here so I can post later for y'all that didn't see it. And then, uh, let's see here. I always post pictures and stuff. Okay, so y'all see how easy that was? So easy. So I'm going to leave this video up. Like I say, I'm going to leave it up so y'all can... Uh, maybe I'll go online here in a minute. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go upstairs and go back online. And chat with y'all a little more. But that's it. Y'all do this uh, chicken and dumpling. It's so easy. It's so simple. Follow the recipe exactly. I need to taste this again. And make sure with the cornbread though. I just love chicken and dumplings here. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yes sir. Chicken. Dumplings so tender. Try this recipe. I'll be back online here in about 20 minutes. I'm gonna go upstairs. But try this recipe. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this page, share the recipe, and I'll see y'all soon. Have a blessed old school soul food day.